Hey, welcome back to another video. Today we've got another answering stupid questions. And today, I don't want to necessarily... Look, people click on the spicy titles. I actually respect this guy who sent me this. And uh, we actually have some good talks. I like this guy. What's his name there? Big Killa T Dog. We, we've talked about a lot of stuff. He's He's got a good head on his shoulders. But if you're out there watching, which you might be, people click on these types of titles. So sorry you got featured in this type of video. But we seriously need to talk about this because a lot of times what I see out there in the political sphere is that people with uh, people that don't understand the way the financial system work can be emotionally manipulated because they don't understand the data that they're looking at and the implications of basically the policies that they are uh, able to vote on. So anyways, today we're talking about this IRS data that was leaked about thousands of wealthiest Americans and how they don't pay their fair share in taxes. And uh, basically, I, sh I had showed you guys um, some data that shows that the wealthy basically pay, they the top 1% makes 21% of the income, but they pay 40% of the income taxes. So we have to understand what are income taxes. So income is taxes on your income, right? So it's taxes on money that you actually made. So we're going to get into this and show why that this doesn't actually contradict that the billionaires, uh, the 1% pay most of the income taxes because a lot of what they have is an income. So anyways, IRS data shows that the, the thousands of the America's wealthiest, I can't read, sorry, providing a precedent, an unprecedented look into the finances of titans like Jeff Bezos, Elon Musk, Warren Buffett, Bill Gates, Mark Zuckerberg. So let's go into this thread. Okay, so records show that not just the income taxes paid by these multi-billionaires, uh, but also it shows their stocks and stock trades, gambling winnings, and even the results of audits. What it revealed demolishes the cornerstone myth that, America, that the American tax system, that everyone pays their fair share and that the richest pay the most. So notice how they're using language that suggests that the rich aren't paying the most um, they, they, we'll, we'll get into it. Basically, they're they're saying that they aren't paying the most, which we have seen, according to income tax data, they are paying the most. And they're paying more than their share of actual income earned. But like we said, a lot of what they have is an income. So here it is. Here's the crux of the thing. Number four, rather, than, rather these IRS data show the wealthiest perfectly legally pay income taxes on only a tiny fraction of the hundreds of millions, if not billions, their fortunes grow each year. Okay, so... Here's the thing. Let's go over to what billionaires actually keep their money in. Is this is this the one? Okay, so this shows up what ac assets actually make up wealth. So 10K, 100K, $1 million net worth, $10 million net worth, $100 million, $1 billion. So we see here liquid. So this is basically cash, right? So we see it's pretty large for someone with a 10K net worth, and it goes and it gets very small for someone with a billion dollar net worth. Primary residence, it's very large if you are 100K net worth, which makes sense. The homeowners typically are in that 100K to 1 million range. It's, uh, it gets smaller and smaller as you go towards the billionaire class because they start to own more real estate, more assets. Uh, vehicles, very large percentage of a low net worth person's net worth. So like, if you were to take this 10K, which is what a lot of people have as their net worth, this is what people think of billionaires. They think that their primary residence is worth, I don't know, $300 billion. They've got, I mean, million rather. They've got $100 million of cash sitting around. But really, it's not that way. So billionaires don't actually have a lot of cash sitting around. So life insurance is pretty big for the uh, smaller net worths, right? Because they don't have a billionaire. Why would you have a bunch of life insurance? If you die, your family is well taken care of. Right, so we just have to take pay attention, take inventory of how the wealth is much differently distributed. So mutual funds, we see that it goes up as a percentage as we go uh, towards the billionaire class, then it kind of trails back down. One of the interesting, most interesting things is business interests. Okay, so when we're talking about those Jeff Bezos, we're talking about those uh, Warren Buffetts and things. The business interest starts to get huge over here, right? That looks like, I'm, I'm not scrolling down this uh, article and reading every single one, but this looks like over 50% is in business interest. So, of course, if you're not selling off your business interest, you're not really realizing any income. So as this grows, and if you don't sell it off, you didn't actually make any income, right? It's like if I owned 
I don't know, this chair behind me and I didn't sell it, I didn't make any income on that chair. So basically what you're saying is the billionaire didn't sell their chair. They didn't sell their business. That's what we're looking at here. So let's go back to the post. Okay, so a tiny fraction of their wealth, of their fortunes. Okay, so it shows down here, total income reported, Warren Buffett, 125 million. Wealth growth, 24 billion. Okay, so true tax rate, as they say, 0.1%. So his true tax rate is the tax rate that he actually paid. You're not getting taxed on income that you didn't make. All right, so they're basically just making this up. This, this is made up. And everybody can use the tax code in this way. For example, I'm trying not to sell stocks because if I were to sell them and realize gains, that would increase my income. All right. So because I'm not realizing the income, I'm not paying the income taxes. OK, so is that a evil thing that billionaires are doing or is that just being smart with your money? All right. You have to answer that question for yourself. Let's keep on going, though. The current high tax rate in America is 37 percent for couples combined with uh, 62 $628,300, but our analysis shows how the ultra-rich effectively sidestepped the system. For example, in 2007, Jeff Bezos paid $0 in income tax, even as his company stock price doubled, increasing his wealth by an estimated $3.8 billion. Now, I would not be surprised by that, but you have to take into account expenses, okay? So when you're mostly operating a business, most of your uh, money is tied up into that business. That business has expenses. If you don't make an income, as according to the law, you don't pay taxes. Okay, and his his salary is only about eighty one, eighty two thousand dollars, besides what he receives for security. And we already went over that in a prior prior video. So, anyways, let's keep on going through this. This is it's not outright lies, but it is taking advantage of people's ignorance. Okay, and I just mean ignorance in the sense of people not knowing what I'm telling you guys right now. So the CEO outdid himself in 2011 when he only reported when he reported a negative income to the IRS due, the, due to investment losses. OK, they're at least telling the truth about that, but claimed four thousand uh, tax credit for his kids. OK, so he, he did something legal. That's what number seven says between 2006. I, like, I don't know who doesn't who, who goes into like TurboTax and is like, oh, I'm not going to claim my tax credit for my kids like. Not that he uses TurboTax, but anyways, you get the point. Between 2006 and 2018, a period for which ProRepublica has complete data on, Jeff Bezos' wealth increased by $127 billion. Okay, so basically what they're saying is that his company grew. Amazon got bigger. That's the big news there. Uh, number nine, during that same time, he paid $1.4 billion in personal federal taxes, a massive number, but only worth 1.1% of his increased wealth. So basically what they're saying is that because he didn't sell off all of his Amazon shares, he's an evil person. Mr. Bezos did not respond to our request for comment on this story because this story is really stupid. But anyways, do I have anything else for you guys here today? I don't think I do. Um, feel free to sign up for the links down in the description below. Um, I, I hope you guys see that the error of this story. If you don't make any income, you don't pay any income taxes. I think that what they're basically trying to do and what, you know, the political left right now is trying to push for is a wealth tax. And if we think about that wealth tax, think about what that would actually do to somebody like this. They don't have what this is what most people think billionaires look like this 10 K up here. They don't have a ton of cash sitting around. So what are you essentially doing? You're telling them, sell your business, sell your real estate, sell your uh, fixed income investments, all your mutual funds. What's this over here? I can't really read that. They're basically, oh, sell off your stocks, sell all your stuff. Basically, that's what they're saying. And uh, just give it away to the people. That, so that's what they're saying. But anyways, hopefully you guys like this video. Hopefully it was enlightening to someone out there. Most of you guys out there, I'm preaching to the choir. But I'll see you guys in the next video. Make sure you hit the links down in the description. That helps grow the channel. I have been getting some BlockFi referrals. And that's awesome, guys. I, I'm just a normal guy. You know, normal income. So any extra help that you guys can provide. I really do appreciate it and I'll see you guys in the next video.